All right. What does it mean to prepare our hearts to receive the Christ child? Yeah, that's like the big question. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Well, I've been praying a lot about childhood, spiritual childhood, and like those beautiful passages where Christ talks about, like, unless you turn and become a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So whether the, the person who asked that intended to qualify it that way by saying the Christ child, there's something about this, this choice of God, like the, we, we discern God's preference for silence as we look at the way he chooses to enter into creation. It's a very quiet entrance. It's very respectful of the natural order. God could have just shown up as a fully grown man and just start uh, flipping over tables. But he enters into the created order from the beginning at the level of conception to redeem the whole thing. And his first breathing moments outside of the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary are quiet, subtle, childlike moments, which evokes in us and reminds us of the the approachability of God that like, I mean, everybody's drawn to a child, you know, you see a baby and you just get happy. And there's, that's not too small a detail that, that God would overlook. Like God chose to first to become an infant to, to place himself in this, this human form dependent upon the blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, but also to invite the adoration of the shepherds and the adoration of the Magi. So we would have the archetypal form of encountering this child. So we need eyes of faith to do that because the child, Jesus, was not recognizably divine. Uh, There were had to have been villagers and shepherds who were like, no, thanks. That's not God. And they walked away. Herod couldn't distinguish and his servants couldn't distinguish which child is which, which one's the divine one. So there's this hiddenness that requires of us eyes of faith. And that simplification, that purification, that repentance that comes up throughout the journal is actually meant to purify our hearts that we would be able to see God. So wherever we can uh, become like children uh, and, and we can recognize God's choice for quietness, hiddenness, subtlety, and wherever we can let ourselves delight in the small gifts of creation, we'll be better attuned to recognize the very same hidden, small, vulnerable presence of God in the Eucharist as much as as well in the hearts of believers. And so there's this way of simply thinking about like, what does it mean that God became a child? And then what does it mean for me to become like a child so that I can also recognize in childlikeness uh, the simplicity of God? Because God is ultimately simple. And uh, a child sees things very simply. The complex, the grown up, the overly mature makes things too complicated. And in fact, that's often why we miss God is because we've complexified something that's meant to be quite simple. Yes, absolutely. And you know what what else um, draws my mind in that question is um, anyone who's held a newborn, there's this sense of awe and silence that enters in as you linger over a newborn and their little fingers and, you know, the amazing gift of creation of how we get to participate in that. And, um, you know, you could take that internally and just hold the Christ child before you and linger over him in your prayer and wait on him to come. And you're Christmas. speaking to every mother's heart, I think. In this I, world. you know, I'm just like, oh, wow. I have never con- contemplated that. So yeah. that's, that's beautiful. 